This is a solo stealth run for the Kayo Perico heist. When you're selecting weapons here, make sure to buy the optional suppressors so that the guards won't hear you when you are murdering all of their friends. I like this boat approach here because it lets you get from the north end of the island to the compound in the south much easier than the other options. The other options like the stealth copter or the sub, they just drop you off at one spot and leave you, which isn't really that helpful. The first guard here, who's coming away from the power station, is a pretty easy headshot kill. Just wait until he walks towards you. He's pretty far out of your range. And make sure he's out of the range of the camera you can see on the mini-map. And then you can pop him in the head and continue. Throughout this run here, I'm going to speed up some of the cutscenes and some of the hacks, just because it's already a really long run. I'll probably reiter reiterate a few times that an important part to be able to do this whole thing undetected is to just be patient and do things kind of slowly. The next two guards here, from this angle, their heads are lined up, so it's not too hard to take them out uh, by just tapping on them, and um, then you can move on to the power station. With the power station, you just got to make sure the camera is swinging back and forth and you're out of range of it when you go over to cut or burn the lock. I don't think bolt cutters which are scattered around the island, are worth picking up to cut these sort of locks. They say it's quicker and quieter, but it takes about the same amount of time to just burn the lock than it does to use the bolt cutters. So I wouldn't bother picking up the bolt cutters. It's just kind of a waste of time, I think. I'm going to fast forward through going over to this the control tower and doing the hack to um, kill the air defenses mostly because it took me an embarrassingly long time to complete the hack, so uh, I will save you from the minute I spent here. Um, it's just like the other ones in Cayo Perico. You have to line up these numbers and make sure that they add up to the right result. Um, there are not that m really many combinations, but, you know, it can take... Sometimes it's really quick, sometimes it takes a while. The next guard who I go to um, is right outside of this hangar, and... He's not one you necessarily have to kill. You can see his his uh, patrol is a pretty wide area. So I could have just avoided him. And it's probably more risky to kill him just because you could potentially miss. But I didn't want to worry about him coming out of the hangar. So I just decided to take him down here before I ran in uh, to grab the cocaine. Uh, the cocaine is one of the more high value targets. It's worth more in your bag than cash or weed. So on this run, I'm going to take the coke here and the other coke on the other side of the airfield, which will fill my bag. So I'm just crossing the airfield here, making sure I'm out of the range of the other guards as I circle in to see the coke on the mini-map that you can see there. And while I'm doing this, because this kind of takes a little while, um, the two weed spots that you saw in the hangar a minute ago... You can get those just by using the forklift to get up there. You don't have to use it to pick up a crate. You can just hop on top of the forklift itself, and you can do that by yourself. You know, you don't need to have a team to do it. So this guard I just shot here, he's moving back and forth just in a straight line, so whenever he's moved back and his back is to you, it's an easy time to sneak up and take him down, and then I could continue and loot the building behind him. So I grab the coke here. And then I'll speed it up. This is just travel, really, from here all the way to the south end of the island to where the compound is. So I will speed this up. Hee <laughs> hee, look at me run! So quick! Hilarious. Um, and this speedboat doesn't really have the great greatest handling. You can't really go left or right super easily in it, which is kind of annoying. Um, also speeding this up because I run into this rock and it's pretty annoying to get out of since there's just really no turning radius on this thing. It's basically just designed to go really fast in a straight line. So on my way to the compound now, I chose the drainage tunnel um, as the location to get in because it's just easier. Uh, night, of course, for the setup is always better for self. And the combination of the two is just kind of the easiest way to get into the compound. 
If you're with a friend, it is possible to equip a rebreather here using your interaction menu under style, then accessories. But for some reason, it's always grayed out for me on a solo run. But on runs with other players, it's there. So on solo, you have an unlimited amount of time to actually burn this grate here. Even though you don't have a rebreather, it's just the swimming down part and the swimming to the end that you need to do really quickly where you could run out of air. So I was tapping E that whole time when I sw swum down to the grate. And then once I actually swum forward to that yellow marker, because I didn't want to drown and die and lose the run. So now that I'm into the compound, the first guard just right in front of me is just staring out into the vast ocean, thinking, why am I a guard at this place? So he's pretty easy to kill. And I kind of take a Z pattern to this whole compound. So I go to this one edge and I kill a few guards here and then I'll cross to the middle and then I'll cross to the other side and then out through the main gate. So if you were like, had the map all the way out, it would kind of look like a Z. And that's just a, a route that I like to take. All of the guards are like a little bit scripted. So if you're just patient and watch where they're going, the ones who are moving, then, and take your time, you can, you can get through it pretty easily. This guard I'm killing up here didn't necessarily have to kill him. I obviously could have avoided him, but what I'm searching for here is the all-important gate key. Uh, gate keys are really important because you can get under where the heist, the vault room is, and it's a lot easier to get out from there than it is to go back through the center tower where you get into it. And because this is a solo run, any of the key cards are kind of useless to me because I can't get into any of those secondary looting things. So I just hes hesitated there a little bit to just learn a little bit more, refresh about the guard path. This guard's kind of walking in a square. So he's coming toward me here. He can't see me because I have the brush um, and the wall between me and him. So even though I'm in his line of sight, he can't see me. Right when he passes me, it's time to make the move across this courtyard. And there's a lot of stuff to avoid, but most of it isn't moving. So I'm just kind of taking my time making sure to avoid it. Did get freaked out here a little bit at the guy with the minigun, who's that big red thing coming toward me on my left. So you'll find these little nooks um, that I hide out here for a little while. You know, they're super helpful. You know, there's no reason to go super fast through a stealth run because you can take your time. There are a lot of little no nooks like this. And for the most part, the guards are just going back and forth on patrols and not going in big, you know, unscripted paths. So once you're patient, you can learn their paths and plan around it. Now that the mini gun guy passed, I can kind of continue here. These three guys who have red vision cones are all not moving. They're all, the back is to me, so they're easy to come up and kill. And this next one here drops the all important gate key, which is fantastic. So I'm continuing up the stairs here, and I really take my time with this third guard because it's possible to fail a stealth run if you kill this third guard close to someone who's walking by on the ground level, which is very annoying if it happens. So just wait until all the other cones of vision near this third guard who I'm about to kill are gone and then kill him. Because it really sucks to fail when you think you're not going to fail. Fail meaning they sound the alarm, not that you actually fail the heist. You can still continue a botched stealth heist, of course. The fingerprint cloner that I'm about to do here is super easy once you realize that the prints you're scrolling through are in order. So once you get to the top print, that's like print part one. You can literally just count, okay, that's print part one, then print part two, until you get to the one you need. Really, really easy. So since I have the gate key, I know I can go out through this same level that I'm on as I'm looting here. And as I hack the fingerprint cloner here to get out, uh, my route is to the left where I can continue to the other side of the compound. And once I get outside here, there's this like nice little nook and no guards ever come down there. So it's a safe spot I like to observe the guard routes on the pause menu and plan my move. 
So once the guards were far enough away, I decided I'll just head across that courtyard. And you want to get to where the grapple hook exit would be. I didn't get a grapple hook because you don't need one. So I'm just waiting for the guards to get a little bit farther away. And then I can go up and I kill both of these guards. This one guard is just to him about... Not this guard. This guard's coming toward me, so that's kind of an easy kill. But this other guard, he's just patrolling, overlooking the courtyard, and then he'll turn around, and he'll come back and just stare at the wall. Like, what are you guarding, man? You're looking at a brick wall. What the hell are you doing? There's not even, like, any ivy or artwork or a mural there. He's just looking at a wall. Like, come on, man. Mr. Rubio, you gotta get some some better guards. Um, anyway, this n next guard who I just killed, he was coming at me. That typically makes it an easier kill. If they're coming, like, right at you or just walking away from you, if somebody coming across your line of sight is obviously a lot harder, and that's just a bigger risk on a solo run, a solo stealth run. So if you're trying to keep stealth, you really just gotta lower your risk to keep your success rate higher. All these other guards weren't moving right as I'm getting to the main gate, so they're pretty easy, you know, pretty straightforward shots if they're not moving and I'm far away. As a precaution, this guard at the top of the tower here, I killed him. I don't really think you have to, um, but just in case when I left, if he were still there on the map, I didn't want him to detect me, so easy enough. He's not moving. His back is to me. Go up, shoot him real quick. Coming back down, I'm selecting this main exit as my exit point. Skip through this little cutscene, and once you're outside, your first goal is really to get to the helicopter. Between you and the helicopter, there are two guards. I guess one if you skip the other one, but they're not moving, so they're pretty easy to kill also if you just know where they are and take your time. But you want to keep in mind that there is a patrol motorbike and Jeep that's along this road. So you really, really got to keep your wits about you on this road. So this is me killing the second guard. And as I'm heading toward the helicopter, kind of out of nowhere, you know, this patrol bike comes and almost detects me. So, you know, here I am running as fast as I can to get out of that cone of vision so I can circle back to the helicopter. Um, this is where I take out my sticky bombs, and you can only do this with a certain weapon loadout, which I would definitely recommend. Four sticky bombs on this helicopter, after it takes off, will disable it and just is a really, really nice thing. A little bit of a hack. Works on any other run. Doesn't have to be a stealth run, but it's just nice not have to worry about it. So the two guards here, after I kill that one guy by himself who's out of their cone of vision, this is a pretty important tough piece of the run. You really need to be on your game for. Um, headshotting one of them will make the other duck, and I'll slow this down to game speed for you. If I headshot one, the other will immediately duck because he sees his friend die, and then when the second one, after the second one ducks, he stands back up straight, and that's the best time that I found to headshot the second one. So I always wait until the second guard stands back up from his duck to headshot him, because it's a predictable thing that I can plan for and I don't have to move up and down on my crosshair. Once I hop on the bike, I just drive back past that camera that's swinging back and forth, obviously, and the side of the island that has less stuff on it is the right side, so that's the side I take. This is kind of a bit of travel. One thing you'll get used to in the Cayo Perico heist is all the shrubbery. So I'm hitting G, detonate my sticky bombs, taking the helicopter down so Mr. Ruby isn't finding me. And about the shrubbery, you'll get used to getting knocked off your bike by phantom branches and stuff, which is super annoying, but, you know, they don't want to make it too easy. So I got knocked off my bike here, and I'm just continuing around the right side of the island, just because there's less stuff in, in your way out there. There is a last guard here who I probably could have avoided and probably should have avoided, but I wanted to kill him, and I kind of put my whole run in jeopardy with this. 
Um, Because remember, if you only shoot a guard in the shoulder or the neck, even if he goes down, he'll still trigger the alarm if he's not dead, and then your stealth runs over. So, you know, I'm probably 20 or 30 minutes into this at this point and came pretty close to failing with this guard. Um, You can see as I come to, just like with the double guards, as I'm coming to kill this guard, I actually miss the first shot, and even though he's by himself, he ducks because bullets are whizzing by his head. And he stands back up. So I missed this first shot and he ducks, stands back up. And that's when I kind of luckily get him in the head and I can continue the stealth run. So you can probably avoid him. It's probably not worth even taking the shot, but I wanted to go around the very edge of the island. So decided to just take him out since he could have potentially detected me. So back on the bike, I'm continuing around the edge of the island. I stay off the road mostly as a precaution in case there are passing patrols, because that does happen. And I also don't really want to get caught on the right, the wrong side of the guardrail. And I'm coming up to this bottleneck here with a tower. So there's a, a guard in the tower who's moving to look up over each side of the tower. And I want to stay out of his line of sight, of course. And you could take that shot, but it's probably not risking it. So you can do a jump a little bit and just drive around it, and you can kind of avoid the whole situation. I was waiting for him to move to look at a different side, and he didn't. At this point, it's pretty straightforward to get back to the air point, which is the extraction point I chose. And fun fact with that last cliff that I jumped over, it's a great way to go from the north to the south on, like, the Intel prep mission. It's really pretty easy to do if you just pop a wheelie and get some air and GTA physics do the rest. So back at the airport, you have a few options. You can actually swim all the way out. You can totally do that. It just takes forever. I kind of decided to do that here and then say, eh, better not. That will take too long. So if not risking anything is your thing, you can take that route. But uh, there is another plane other than the one that you normally take near the hangar. Um, that sometimes they're halfway down the runway. So instead of killing anyone, which would be pretty risky, I'd cross over this runway and then go back again to the middle of it. And there is a puddle jumper plane, which since I already took the air defenses down, I can literally just hop in and fly away to victory. So on the plane here, enjoying my ruby necklace and cocaine. So that's it. Hope you liked it. Please don't subscribe. This is my first video in 12 years.